All right, welcome to Talking Investing. I am Tom, and as always, this is not financial advice. Today, I want to talk about Core Scientific, stock ticker C-O-R-Z. They are a Bitcoin mining company. They have been in deep, deep trouble. Their stock was down as much as 99%. Yesterday, they were thrown a lifeline in the way of a proposed loan for $72 million. So I want to go through, is that enough? Does that solve their problem? Does that get them where they need to go? Or is this just delaying the inevitable? This is a company that was almost certainly within days away from filing for bankruptcy. So I want to go through the numbers, see what it means. If you're new to the channel, please remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Also, if everybody could please smash the like button, I would appreciate it. Lastly, if you want to support the channel, you can hit the join button and become a member. Remember get some members only content the join button is right next to the subscribe button on the youtube page if you don't see the button there's a link below we also do a once a week members only live stream in addition to that the members get to pick a stock for me to do a deep dive on each week so we'd love to see you there let's talk about core scientific okay there is a lot going on in a very short period of time this stock has gone ballistic now like i said it was down over 99 percent as of two days ago so you know, even with the gigantic run-up, it's still down maybe in the neighborhood of 96%. But I want to put in perspective what's happened because I will tell you as I speak, and it's the middle of the trading day, their market cap is up $81 million. So a company called B. Riley has extended them an offer. So I'm going to read to you from that press release. Okay, dear fellow shareholders and lenders of Core Scientific, I'm not going to read this entire thing. I just want to hit a few crucial points. On October 26th, Core Scientific announced it would be suspending all principal and interest payments coming due in October and early November to several of its equipment lenders and for other financing, including its two bridge promissory notes. The company also stated it was exploring strategic alternatives with respect to the capital structure and suggested that all options, including bankruptcy, were on the table. Since then, Core Scientific's common shares have declined 86% and currently trade at 15 cents. So prior to this letter, they were at about 14 and a half cents. They're up drastically from there since this letter hit the market, representing a market capitalization of approximately $50 million. So they're now at about $131 million in the middle of the trading day today. We'll see where they've settled. The key statement here is that Core Scientific was considering all options, including bankruptcy. And the reality is, based on just the math of where they were at, they were looking at bankruptcy. That was the option that made sense. I'm not sure there was another option for them other than what B. Riley is proposing here, which is almost a self-induced bankruptcy reorganization without actually going through the process where the company gets destroyed in the middle. Even if Core does find a way to go into Chapter 11, reorganize and come out the other side, I just don't see how there's any money left at all for shareholders. Shareholders are last in line in that equation. So, so as a shareholder, and B. Riley is both a shareholder and a lender, so as a shareholder, they're looking at their investment going to zero. And as a lender, they're owed $40 million dollars and they're looking at potentially taking a big haircut on that in the bankruptcy process. So they have a different proposal. So my question to B. Riley at the end of this is going to be, are they throwing good money after bad, or is this enough to get Core Scientific back on track? They're now proposing to give them another $72 million. In our opinion, the vast majority of Core Scientific's issues are self-imposed and can be corrected in conjunction with an open, transparent discussion and ongoing participation with its creditors and equity holders to that end. Okay, B. Riley has proposed to Core Scientific's board of directors that it would provide $72 million in new non-cash pay refinancing on favorable terms, providing more than two years of runway for the company to achieve profitability. So I just want to break that down a little bit because there's an awful lot in that sentence. So they're saying $72 million. Later, they're going to talk about how, they're, how and when they're going to distribute that. So it's in non-cash pay financing, which basically means this $72 million in debt for B. Riley, they will agree to subordinate it to all the other debt. And they will get no principal or interest payments on this really until all the other debt is satisfied. So this is going out on a big limb for them. And that's why I'm asking, are they throwing good money after bad? Now, if this gets core scientific to the other side, and they survive, this could turn back into a billion or multi-billion dollar company. This was once a $4 billion company. So B. Riley's looking at this going from 4 billion to 50 million. There's gotta be something we can do in the middle here 
and see if we can turn this ship around. So, so B. Riley isn't saying this, but I'm almost wondering, they're offering $72 million right now. Is there more that they may be willing to offer down the road if things are moving in the right direction? Because I don't think this $72 million gets them where they need to go. That's my opinion. There's a lot of gigantic variables, so it very well might. But to me, it looks like a little bit of a long shot. They're hoping on a few things happening that may or may not happen. Okay, so just a quick paragraph here. They go in and they basically scold the management and the board of directors of Core Scientific. They say basically, Core Scientific currently has approximately $300 million of equipment and other loans. So that's just their equipment and other loans. They have another fair value, about $700 million of convertible notes that's past all of this. They do address that later, but essentially, what B. Riley's philosophy is, listen, those aren't due for a couple of years. Let's not even worry about those. So this $72 million obviously is not going to solve the $700 million in debt that they owe on their convertible notes. But what B. Riley is hoping in the middle is that Bitcoin is going to recover, get to a price that's reasonably healthy, and they go through their numbers and talk about some pretty small numbers. You know, back to anywhere back to like $25,000, and B. Riley thinks that Core Scientific is going to be fine and they will cash flow themselves through this problem. So that's one of the things I want to mention. There's three variables. Number one, we don't know what the price of Bitcoin is. All the other Bitcoin miners as we speak today are crashing. Almost every single one of them is at their, either their two-year low or their all-time low. So the rest of the Bitcoin mining industry is being priced as if Bitcoin is going to crash. While at the same time, Core Scientific is going through the roof now, obviously, there's a catalyst here with an infusion, but this tends to assume that Bitcoin is not going to crash. This tends to assume that Bitcoin is going to get at least somewhere reasonably healthy, somewhere between $18,500 and $25,000 is where they talk about the solution lying. This doesn't depend on Bitcoin getting back to $50,000 or hitting an all-time high. It just needs to get back to a reasonable place. But there's further assumptions in that because we don't know what the network difficulty rate is going to be. So they're calculating all that, making some assumptions on how much energy it's going to take to mine a Bitcoin. And we know that every two weeks, the network difficulty level is adjusted. So if more companies continue to bring machines online, this math may change on them. The other variable being the cost of energy. So they may have some control over that, but you know, they don't have locked in guaranteed rates across the board for 100% of their energy. So that is another variable that could change this equation. And then lastly, obviously the price of Bitcoin changes this equation. Okay, they say these loans were made when the price of Bitcoin was significantly higher than it is today and the theoretical payoff on miners was significantly faster. These debts were incurred as a part of an aggressive, ill-conceived strategy by the company to continue to build out power facilities and expand miners while never selling Bitcoin on hand and never hedging prices. This approach has led to the company having to sell all of its inventory, and by inventory they mean Bitcoin, representing 9,618 Bitcoin in April 2022 valued at $362 million at a massive loss. So basically they're saying they played this so aggressively without any hedging. Management was assuming everything was going to go right. And, you know, we fell into a scenario where it did not go right. Obviously we're in a bear market or a crypto winner, whatever you want to call it. So this is not what they were planning for. Okay, this next paragraph I'm not going to read. This goes through, Lucas Piper is their analyst and he goes through and does a cash flow model and determines where he thinks they can break even and how they can pay people back. So you'll see they're talking about prices between $18,000 for Bitcoin and $24,500. So anywhere in that range, their analyst is saying, we think over time, this problem can get solved. Okay, now here's their solution. Our proposal is simple. It provides sufficient liquidity to avoid bankruptcy. B. Riley's proposal does not purport to haircut amounts owed to the company equipment lenders. B. Riley is prepared to fund the first 40 million of financing immediately with zero contingencies. For the remainder of the B. Riley's proposed new financing at Bitcoin prices of $18,500 and below, all principal payments to equipment lenders would need to be suspended until the price of Bitcoin recovers to 18,500, okay? So I'm gonna show you their list of equipment lenders. 
and it is extensive. So the first thing is they need to get every single one of these companies that, that Core Scientific owes money to, to agree to these terms. Now, they have said that they've reached out to all of these companies and they're working with them and they think they can get this done, but that's also another big if. Lastly, I'm not sure I understand $40 million of financing immediately without any contingencies. Where's that 40 million going? Is that going to pay interest that's already past due? Because then that would only leave 30 Two million million left for interest payments. Their interest just through nine months this year was $75 million. As Bitcoin continues to rise, additional free cash flow will be distributed in increasing amounts. In the meantime, all interest payments to equipment lenders and B. Riley itself under its outstanding bridge loan, because remember, they're owed $42 million, would be paid in kind for one year to provide additional runway for the company. So they're willing to pay all interest for one year. Now, they're saying it's a $72 million loan. They're structuring it 40 million, no contingencies up front, 32 million over time. So I'm not sure how all that math adds up to paying all this interest. We have had extensive discussions with the company's equipment lenders and believe this path should be acceptable to them. So they feel like they can get this done, obviously, they must be in advanced stages of talking to these people or they would not be putting out an open letter to shareholders, lenders, etc. Okay, so they then, lastly, they say this leaves the convertible debt. There's no reason to address this debt at the present juncture. I'm not gonna go any further than that. They're just saying, listen, that's $700 million out there. That's out a couple of years. Let's not even talk about that. Let's not even worry about that. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. And then they say time is of the essence. We are prepared to work with all stakeholders to achieve the best outcome under the circumstances. They're saying, listen, management can't just go file chapter 11. They have a fiduciary responsibility to try to save some of this equity that everybody has put into the company, which in my opinion, and it looks like B. Riley agrees, some or all of that equity is going to get lost in a bankruptcy chapter 11. We strongly urge the board of directors to work with us expeditiously to achieve a productive resolution for the benefit of all core scientific shareholders. Just as a point of reference, this is footnote six in their most recent financial statements issued September 30th, 2022. So they have a very small note to a company called Kentucky. The Genesis loan is paid off, but then you'll see this entire list. That's nine other loans. And then the secured convertible notes, which are on their books at $540 million, but you can see then there's an adjustment here to fair value because they're really more like $700 million. So all these companies would need to agree to these terms. All these companies would get paid interest and essentially B. Riley would be providing the money to pay that interest. In exchange, B. Riley would take a note that is subordinated to all these notes. So B. Riley's not gonna get $72 million back until such time as all these other companies are made whole. They're gonna have to pay the interest on these loans at these stated rates. What they're gonna get to avoid is the principal. It was the principal due on these loans that was gonna put them cash flow negative and not by a little bit, it was not even close. So to some extent, what they're proposing here makes some sense. B. Riley did not necessarily provide us enough information to explain exactly how all this was gonna work. This is a little bit of a generic outline. Now, obviously, I'm not, I don't expect their 500 pages of support that probably go behind this one-page letter, but I don't know that this is gonna get core scientific to the finish line, and I think because there's variables that are unknown in the future, I don't know that anybody knows the answer to that question. So I'm just gonna do real quick, from where we closed two days ago until the middle of the day today, this stock is now up 156%, and it's trading at about 34 cents. At its peak today, it was up about 225%, so you can see, this is adding more market cap than the entire loan that they're getting. So this is basically the market just adjusting their risk assessment of these guys going out of business. So this is a stock that essentially has gone from down 99% to maybe down 96% by the end of whatever we see here over the next couple of days. So, so obviously this is a very volatile stock. This is not financial advice. Please, please invest carefully. I think there'll be a lot of people that try to swing trade this. I don't do that. So do your own due diligence, use your best judgment. And that's all I got for you on Core Scientific. So thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.